guys, this is Clara Hudson of While They Play Designs. On this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create the I-cord bind off. And this is just a way to create an I-cord as you're binding off your stitches in your pattern. And it just creates a beautiful little rolled edge to your work. And this actually mirrors the I-cord cast on in this particular pattern. And this is the Desert Poppy. I will go ahead and link to where to download this pattern in the description on this video. But that's what I'm going to be showing you on this video is the technique for the I-cord bind off. And in this particular pattern, when we do the I-cord cast on, it's actually only consisting of two stitches. If you take a look here, there's one and two. And then that gives you a actual length of cast on stitches above the I cord. So we only have two stitches in our I cord and then our cast on stitches above it. So because of that, for this particular bind off, I'm not going to have three stitches in my I cord. I'm also going to have two. So if you look here, we have one and two. So there is a different way to do that. Um, you will find a lot of I cord bind off videos online and also just tutorials and they will consist of either three or four stitches in the I cord. So this is just a different way of doing this and the instructions are actually written out for you in the pattern. But when you're when you get to the point where you're ready to bind off your work, you'll just remove your stitch marker. And we're working this cowl in the round on circular needles. They're 24 inch circulars. So when we actually do our bind off, you can continue to use your needle. But as you're binding them off, you'll find that you have a huge gap between the two sets of needles. Um, you may find that too cumbersome to work with. So you can also just pull the end of your circular and let it hang loose. And then you can actually just use a DPN to create this um, I-cord bind off. So that's how I'm going to be showing this to you. Since we are working in the round though, we do want to bring our circular needle back in our work and then cinch up our working yarn. That way we're not cinching up that last stitch too tightly. Now the first step that you're going to want to do for this I-cord bind off is to insert your needle into the first stitch of your round. And we're actually just going to cast on one stitch. So we're going to knit into that stitch, but we're not going to remove that from our needle. We're going to pull this circular through. We're going to pop that new stitch back on to the end of our left hand needle so that we've cast on one stitch. Now we can start our actual repeat for our I-cord bind off. And that is knit one remove that from the needle and then we're going to knit two together through the back loop. So these next two stitches we're going to insert our right hand needle through the back loop of those two stitches like so and then we're going to knit those together and then remove that from the needle and that is our repeat. Then we're going to place two stitches back on the left hand needle And again, knit one, remove that from the left hand needle, and then knit two together through the back loop. And remove that from the left hand needle. And then place the two stitches back and repeat. Knit one, knit two together through the back loop, and place two stitches back on the left hand needle. So you can already see our stitches are becoming bound off and while we're doing that bind off we're also creating our I cord at the end of our work and you will start to see this after a couple minutes start to form but this is a technique that some people find to be a little too tedious um, it does take a while and it feels like forever the more stitches that you have 
Um, we have 120 here in this particular cowl, um, so it is going to take a while, but it's very methodical. It's hard to lose your place. You know, you're knitting one, you're knitting two together, and then you're placing two stitches back on the needle. So it's hard to kind of lose your place in your work. But if you take a look here, we've already gotten quite a ways. And you can see our pretty little I cord forming. We have one stitch, and then our second stitch is here in the back. And this really mirrors the I cord cast on at the bottom here of our work. But as you can see, as we're creating this bind off and cast on, that we have this gap between the beginning of our round and the end. And I'm going to show you how to seam this I cord so that it looks completely seamless. If you take a look at this cowl, here's our cast on, our I cord cast on. And it's very hard to see where it was seamed. In fact, I can't even find it. Here we go. You can feel a little knot where I seamed the work, but it is kind of hard to tell where that seam does occur. And if we take a look at our I cord bind off at the top, again, it's very difficult to see where we seamed it. There it is. So I'm going to show you how to seam your I cord as soon as we're done with this bind off. So I will meet you at the end. Okay, so we've almost reached the end of our circular needle of bind off stitches. So we're just going to continue here to the end by knitting one and then knitting two through the back loop, placing those two stitches back on the needle. And you may find that it helps with this particular bind off to have very pointed needles so that you can just slip the stitches back onto that needle. It just makes it a lot easier if you have very tapered needles. Same with your um, needle that you use to do your bind off. This one actually is pretty blunt, but I would recommend using a nice pointed needle. And we're going to slip those two back on the needle knit one and then we're going to knit these last two stitches through the back loop so we're done with our circular now now that we're down to these last two stitches we're simply going to pass the second stitch over the first and i'll actually need that needle that i just got rid of so cinch your working yarn Our last step of this repeat is to place the last to place two stitches back on our left hand needle. Now we pass the second stitch over the first. Okay. So that leaves this last stitch. Now we're done with our circular needle. And then we'll want to just take our scissors and we'll leave probably about six to eight inches of a tail so we can seam our I cord. So we're done with our working yarn. And we don't want this stitch to go anywhere. So we're just going to take a tapestry needle, feed our yarn through it like so, and then we'll just pass that through that last stitch now you can see the beginning of our I cord bind off and the end is extremely wackadoodle. <laughs> Does not look very pretty. And if you take a look at the I cord cast on, it's the same situation we have going on. So we're going to go ahead and seam this up so you can't see where we started and, and began. To start, we're going to mimic this knit stitch that we see. So in order to do that, we're just simply going to insert our needle through the left part of that V and then also through the right part. So you can see here, our little V. We're going to pass our yarn through. Then we're going to rotate our work to the end of our 
I chord here, and we're gonna locate the upside down V right here. And there's the last one that occurred. We're gonna pull that tail through. Nice and tight. Now we will rotate again and find our second knit stitch of our I chord, which is here. And we're gonna go again through the left leg and the right leg of that V. Hopefully you can see that okay. And then pass our needle through with our working yarn. And then we're going to again rotate our work. This was our first stitch of our I chord, and then we're gonna locate the back stitch is there and pass that working yarn through okay so we've seamed our I cord you can actually tell where we have seamed it if you if you're really paying attention to it and you look close but really it looks much better than our little gap that we have going here and then we will just rotate our work to the inside or the wrong side of our work and we're simply going to bury that tail that we have. I'm just going to pass that through the stitches here on the back so we can't see that seam. Okay, And that's going to stay without having to knot it. You don't have to worry about that. Leave a little bit of length here and then cut the tail. So we're done with our tapestry needle. So that is where our actual seam is for our I cord. And really it's, it's pretty invisible. It's, it's not a bad seam to have to work with at all. So I hope that helps you guys. Thanks for watching.